so to start off this install we remove the center grill there and then also we remove the seed information display which stands for sub information display and this is like the top mounted one uh, you fi will find every instruction in the manual and even more information that you don't really need to know but the uh, installation manual is very clear so maybe read through that and maybe also watch this video here and you will see how we will do it fairly easily it's fairly straightforward and it took me three hours including breaks uh, just some of the tasks are a little bit uh, more irritating than others uh, like removing this center vent here there are tutorials on youtube on how to remove it and forms and such and in this install here this was one of the two things that caused me most frustrations not trying to damage anything maybe we will see that we got some scrapes here so i'm not the one to tell you how to remove that uh, center vent uh, i always hate doing that then to remove the radio there are two screws on the top there that you need to remove and then you need to kind of pull it upwards because there's two clips on the underside that hooks it into the dash console and then we remove this controller here on the side uh, you remove it by uh, pinching those two clips there on the back since you have removed the radio don't try to pry it from the front because that won't work so just push those in and it will work so this was actually on the Saturday when the sub festival uh, were so here we can see the weather I never attended because I'd already been there two days and the weather wasn't the best so I was doing this install and then we need to drill through the dash uh, to feed some cables through and there feels like there's almost like three layers in the dash when you're drilling and then the drill would just pop out and then is when you have drilled through what you need to drill and then you have to be cautious that so we don't drill into the ventilation pipes that is under there and then we just feed the wires through that hole and then we need to remove this connector from the connector thing there are two small tabs uh, that we need to like push down and then uh, this inner thing slides out and we need to slide out this because we are going to insert four new pins green into the marked number one spot then pink into the fourth spot and then 11 and 12 like the brown orange to 12 and the gray green to 11 and then we cut off the black connector tab on the opposite side of the green wire and then we need to splice these three wires into the into three of the wires coming from the seed information display controller i'm not sure of the best way how to do this because we also want this to last uh, with vibrations and such so we don't have to redo it but i cut off those uh, wires and then resoldered everything together and look in the manual what colors you need to solder together because this changes from cars age and also maybe with the kit that you get uh, but you need to splice these together so find your best solution that works for you it's a little bit finicky trying to solder in uh, this spot and we open the radio connector by prying on this tab on the end there and then we can slide out this connector and now we need to splice in or solder this green wire to the two green ones coming out from this connector here so i just removed a little bit of the protection and then just soldered it uh, into that wire and then i use some fabric tape to protect everything uh, so and also so it looks fairly oem again and then we take the connector that we previously removed and uh, install it on this adapter cable it's only one way to insert this and then we can install it on the sub information display and on this information display you also need to like cut down one of the ends there so the cable can feed through and not be pinched by
by the SAR information display when you install it. And to get everything to fit correctly, I needed to put this small adapter thing there down into that hole. Otherwise, I just couldn't fit and the front speaker grill again. So I would maybe recommend you that, just push it down there. But if it were to fall off down there, I'm not sure how we would retrieve it, so hopefully that won't happen. And then you just insert the OBD2 dongle into the OBD2 connector, and you can fire it up, and you do that by holding in the info button or the scroll wheel, you just push it in and it will uh, go over to this uh, ACIT menu and my favorite function is the way that I now can say exactly the percentage of how much fuel that is left in the tank and also the trip how much fuel I'm actually using in liters per trip and also until I reset it which is cool because of economics and such tracking how much you use and how much a trip costs the only sad thing is that power figures like HP and Torque does not work on my car since I have it tuned. Uh, but another cool function that I like is the way you like tap the blinker. You can have it set to a few extra blinks like on modern cars. You tap it once and it blinks three or four times. I find that useful even though these kind of blinker stocks are not you kind of need to push it a little bit harder down than on a motor car for it to activate and like feel it. And also the welcome lights. You can configure what kind of lights you want it to use. So I have low beam, parking lights in the front, fog lamps and then the rear tail lamps. And I think this looks really cool when you're coming up to the car.